This video is about working with logarithmic expressions. This is AP Precalculus Topic 2.9. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. Convert the following equations from exponential form to logarithmic form. You can convert an exponential equation to log form by taking the log of both sides. Because we have a base 2, we need to do the log base 2 on both sides. The log base 2 and the base 2 cancel each other out. These are inverse operations. That's going to leave behind the 3 on the left. On the right, we just have the log base 2 of 8. And that's it. We have converted from exponent form to log form. Because of the base 10 on number 2, we're going to take the log base 10 of both sides. The log base 10 and the base 10 cancel each other out, leaving behind the 3. And on the right side, we just bring down the log base 10 of 1000. This is an acceptable answer, but I should point out that log base 10 is a special case called the common log, and we don't have to write the base 10. It's understood. So we can show our work and record the answer like this log of 1000 means log base 10 of 1000. Because we have a base 4 on number 3, we take log base 4 of both sides. The log base 4 and the base 4 cancel each other out, leaving behind the x. And then we bring down the log base 4 of 7. On number 4, we have a base e. So we're going to do the log base e of both sides. On the left side, we bring down the log base e of y. But on the right hand side, the log base e and the base e cancel each other out, leaving behind x minus 1. Log base e is another special case. This is called the natural log. Instead of writing log base e of y, it's traditional to write natural log y with an ln and no e showing. It's still there, it's just understood. On the right hand side, log base e of e to the x minus 1 power becomes natural log e to the x minus 1 power. The invisible base e is still there and it cancels out the e as before. This is the preferred way to rewrite this equation in log form but the green version is also correct. Convert the following equations from logarithmic form to exponential form. For number five, we can convert this log equation to an exponential equation by dropping a base four on both sides of the equation. This is called exponentiating both sides of the equation because each side has now become the exponent of the four. On the left side, the base 4 and the log base 4 cancel each other out. These are inverse operations. This will leave behind just the 1 on the left. On the right, let's write 4 to the 0 power. This is the exponential form and means the exact same thing as the original equation. For number 6, remember that a log with no visible base is the common log understood to be log base 10. Therefore, we can exponentiate by dropping a base 10 on both sides of the equation. The base 10 cancels out the log base 10, leaving behind the 1 over 100 is equal to, and then just bring down your 10 to the negative 2 power. On number 7, we see the base 16, so we drop a base 16 on both sides. The base 16 and the log base 16 cancel each other out, leaving behind just y. So y is equal to 16 to the 1 half power. Natural log x is really log base e of x. That's why we will drop a base e on both sides of the equation. And the base e and the log base e will cancel each other out, leaving behind just x on the left. X equals e to the fourth power. Evaluate the following expressions without a calculator. 
A logarithm is the exponent that turns the first number into the second number. So the log base 3 of 9 is 2 because 3 squared is 9. Similarly, the log base 6 of 36 is also 2 because 6 to the second power is 36. Natural log 1 really means the same thing as log base e of 1. So you evaluate by asking yourself what power turns e into 1. Well, we know that anything to the 0 power is equal to 1. So this must be 0. e to the 0 power is 1. Just like 5 to the 0 power is 1. 7 to the 0 power is 1. By the way, e is a constant like pi. It's approximately 2.718. This comes up often enough that I need you to memorize this. Memorize that the natural log of 1 is 0 without having to think about it. Log of 10 is really log base 10 of 10. So what exponent turns 10 into 10? Well, 10 to the 1 power is 10. So that's the answer. I'm going to show you number 13 the short way and then the long way. You're asking yourself what power turns 4 into 1 over 16. Ignoring the 1 for a second, I know that 4 to the second power is 16. To make it 1 over 16, I need this to be a negative 2. So that's the answer. Remember, we were trying to figure out what exponent would turn 4 into 1 over 16. I'm saying that the answer is negative 2. So that means 4 to the negative 2 power should give me 1 over 16. Let's just follow through the logic. A negative exponent drops you down to the denominator. So this is the same thing as 1 over 4 squared. And sure enough, that is 1 over 16. So negative 2 is the exponent that turns 4 into 1 over 16. If you followed that, that was the best way to do it very quickly. However, uh, if you struggle to understand what I was talking about, then start by asking yourself, okay, 4 to what power is equal to 1 over 16? Then try to get like bases happening here. So uh, 16 is 4 squared. So I'm really asking 4 to what power is equal to 1 over 4 squared. This is getting closer and closer. 1 over 4 squared is the same thing as 4 to the negative 2 power. So the question becomes 4 to what power is equal to 4 to the negative 2. In this form, it's obvious that the question mark is negative 2. So then you can just write the answer. What power turns 2 into 8? That's 3. Natural log and base e cancel each other out. So the answer is going to simply be 7. I'm leaving space to go ahead and show a little bit of my thought process. Remember that natural log really means log base e. So this original problem is really log base e of e to the seventh power. And we've learned that log base e and base e cancel each other out because these are inverse operations, leaving just the 7. I don't want you to have to show this step, so just understand that natural log and base e will cancel each other out. Now, let's rewrite this as natural log of e to the negative 5 power. Now it becomes just like number 15. The natural log and the base e cancel each other out, and we are left with negative 5. For number 17, we are asking ourselves 25 to what power will equal 5? The answer is 1 half. Remember that 25 to the 1 half power is the same thing as the square root of 25. So that's why this gives us 5. So yes, the exponent that turns 25 into 5 
is one half. By the way, eight to the one third power is the same thing as the cube root of eight, which is two. 16 to what power is two? This is going to be one fourth. I need you to memorize that two to the fourth power is equal to 16, if you have not already memorized that. That means that the fourth root of 16 is equal to two. Written as a fractional exponent, this is the same as 16 to the one fourth power is equal to two. So that's what I just did. What power turns 16 into a two? The one fourth power. What power turns six into the square root of six? We just talked about that. It's going to be one half. Six to the one half power is the same as the square root of six. What power will turn nine into one third? Here's the shortcut. Cover up the one and ask yourself that same question. What power turns nine into three? The square root of nine is three. In other words, nine to the one half power is three. However, to make it into one third instead of just three, I need the exponent to be negative. Now, let me go back and show a few more steps. As always, we start by asking ourselves nine to what power is equal to one third. Now, let's rewrite both sides of the equation using the same base. Nine can be rewritten as three squared. The question mark is sort of being multiplied here. So it's like two times question mark. And then one third can be rewritten as three to the negative one power. Now that we have like bases, we know that the exponents must be equal to each other. In other words, two times question mark must equal negative one. Dividing both sides by two, the question mark reveals itself to be negative one half. So the way I did it first very quickly was my preferred method. But if you need to sort of work through it algebraically, this is how you would do it. Number 21, the standard in Poor's 500, commonly called the S&P 500, is a stock market index that tracks the stock performance of 500 of the largest companies listed on stock exchanges in the United States. The S&P 500 index is often used as a way to measure the direction of the economy. Selected values of the S&P 500 index are included in the table above. Part A. The first five points in the table above are already plotted on the graph below, where the vertical axis is logarithmically scaled. Plot the remaining two points, shown here, on the axes below. I'm going to expand these exponential expressions to make it more clear what's happening. Notice that the exponent tells you how many zeros are after the one. We need to graph an input value of 50 at an output value of 359.69. 359 is between 100 and 1000. So this output value will be somewhere between here and here. Notice that the very middle is not 500. 500 is always going to be a lot closer to a thousand on a logarithmic scale. In fact, 300 will be close to the middle. So 359.69 will be about here. Next, we need to graph 60 comma 1455.22. 1,455 is clearly between 1,000 and 10,000, but it will be much, much closer to 1,000. After you pass 1,000, you start counting by thousands on a logarithmic scale. So if I were to put nine marks in between here, it would be 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. So the very first mark I would put would be at 2,000. Uh, and 1,400 is less than that. So this is going to be really, really close to 1,000. That's the bottom line. 
That second point will be right about here. Remember that on this graph, 0 represents the year 1940, and 60 represents the year 2000. Part B. For the years 1940 to 2000, the graph of the S&P 500 index can be modeled by a linear function, where the vertical axis was logarithmically scaled. What does this tell you about the S&P 500 index during the years between 1940 and 2000? On a graph where the y-axis is scaled logarithmically, if the data appears linear, it's actually changing exponentially. So the S&P 500 grew exponentially between 1940 and 2000. Plot the following points on the coordinate grid above where the vertical axis has been logarithmically scaled. Point A is 0, 50. So I'm going to start at 0 and I'm going to head towards 50. That's somewhere between 10 and 100. The bold line is 10. As we pass 10, we count by 10s. So it goes 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 0, 50 is right here. I need you to notice that 50 is closer to 100 than it is to 10 on a log scale. We're used to thinking of numbers with a 5 as being right in the middle not on a log scale. They're going to be closer to the top line than the bottom line. 1, 200. So here is 1. And then 200 is going to be beyond 100. As we pass 100, we count by hundreds. So it goes 100, and then 200, 300, 400. So 1, 200 is right here. And this is point B. How about 2, 7? That's less than 10, so we are counting by 1s. However, notice that we are starting from 1 on the bottom line. So 2 is the first mark right here. So this is C. Okay, 3.2, 150. So uh, this is 3.2, this first little mark right here. Uh, let me throw a yellow line in here so we can stay lined up. This yellow line represents the input value of 3.2. Now output 150. As we pass 100 we count by hundreds. So it goes from 100 straight to 200 on the next mark. Will 150 be right in the middle between 100 and 200? No, not on a log scale these numbers with a 5 will be closer to the top than the bottom. So make sure you put 150 closer to 200 than 100. So D is going to be right here. Finally, point E, 4.6. This goes 4.246, so I'm going to put my yellow line right here. So the input is here at 4.6. Now the output of 22 is going to be past 10. As we pass 10, we count by 10s. So the bold line is 10, and then it goes 20, 30, 40 after that. So this first line after 10 is 20. So 22 is just going to be a teeny tiny bit above that. So this is point E. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.